I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you excited with the word of God? You should be because it ministers life. Now we're talking about the manifestation of eternal life. That's God's intention for you. And I pray as you listen, this is a core, core, this is the real message for any child of God. Every other thing we preach, this is the core. If you understand this, you don't even need to hear any other message. You will manifest, your, your life will become the message. Praise God. Before we go into today's teaching, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith with me right now. Listen, you can receive money every day. You don't have to wait till the end of the month for a paid day for you to receive money. You can make up your mind. You see, sometimes, we keep telling you these things, but it's the truth. Make up your mind. And hey, don't believe those people that say God does not prosper people. They are liars. They are not sent by God. They are not sent by God. Paul spoke about them. He said, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Don't believe anybody that tells you God does not prosper people. Don't believe anybody that tells you God does not give people money. Oh, he does. He does. When they talk to you like that, tell them to explain to you how Jesus fed the multitude with five loaves and two fishes. When they tell you things like that, ask them how, how Elijah fed 400 men with a few loaves of bread. Elijah did it. He had this 400 men in his house. 400. And there was no food. And someone had brought um, some bread and, and, and stuff. And Elijah said, put it before the men. Let's eat. And they said, sir, it will reach. He said, don't worry. Put it before them. For thus said the Lord, they will eat and be full and they will be left over us. And that's exactly what happened. Someone said, God does not prosper people. I asked them to explain to you how Elijah was fed by ravens. This one, no hand of man was involved. It was, there was no hand of man. A raven will bring food. Now, God was not killing the ravens for him to eat. So it's not like the raven will come and just drop dead beside him. He'll now roast it and eat. No. Ravens will bring him food morning and evening. Ask them. How did God sustain the widow of Zarephath? Ask them, how did, how did God sustain that woman? I know she had met Elisha. Oh, my husband is dead and the creditors are coming. He said, take a bottle of oil, go and pour. Ask them how to explain how a jar of oil filled several vessels. Don't believe everything you hear. There are ministers who have tried these things and they had a challenge and now they are preaching their unbelief to you. They may have loud sounding voices, but believe me, they are personally dealing with issues in their life that concerns their faith. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes I, I, I listen to certain people and you know, in your concern, you're praying and say, Lord, why is this person? saying these things and the Holy Spirit opened up and said this is what he's dealing with pray for him pray for her so the moment a minister comes and start telling you things that diminishes the power of God you should become suspicious of that preacher so when a man tell you the only way you can get money is to go and walk that completely negates the idea or the purpose of Jesus' coming. Jesus himself said, take no thought for your life, saying, what should I eat? Now, what do you understand from that? Take no thought for your life. This is what Jesus said. What does it mean, take no thought for your life? And a preacher comes now and he's telling you, if you want to have money, go and look for a job. If you want to have money, go and look for a job. The, the whole idea of going to look for a job because I want money is what? 
taking thought, doing exactly what Jesus commanded that we should not do. The question then is, why did Jesus say don't take thought? He clearly stated it. Your father has taken that responsibility. Responsibility for what? What you will eat and clothes, what you will put on. He gave a perfect example about the birds, about the lilies. Brothers and sisters, those were not figurative speeches. Consider the birds. How else do you consider the birds? They don't plant, they don't reap, they don't harvest, they don't walk. But your father takes care of them. How figurative can that be? How do you call that a figurative speech? Does the, till today, have you seen a bed that walks for, to eat? Have you seen a bed that ha beds have farm? That they go to farm during farming season? So during harvest, they can go there and harvest their crop, store in bands. Have you seen? But have you heard any bed die out of hunger? Come on now. Don't let people who have problem with their believing in flesh and infect you. These things are real. They are real. There are some of us who enjoy this thing today. We enjoy it. Not, not fluke, not once in a while. It's our life pattern. So when, when people talk like that, I look at them, I'm like, where, do you, where are you from? Some of us are not taking thought. And God keeps supplying and supplying and supplying and supplying. We have learned not to take thoughts. In fact, the, the, the whole process of taking thought is, is, is seen to us. You want to get something done, say, oh, okay, Father, I need to get this done. And say, how am I going to, hey, what are you doing? Huh? You catch yourself, what are you doing? And sometimes we go as far, okay, you know what? Even this one I'm thinking I've kept, I'm going to use today, I'm giving it away. Let me see God do this way. I've told you this testimony. There was a time when I was in school. It, I got to that point, I made up my mind. My pocket money for school, my parents will give to me. As I receive it, I'm releasing it as a seed. Not because I, a preacher told me to come and sow seed. No! I read these things over and over and over again. And then I'll catch myself thinking, okay, now this money they've given to me. How long will it sustain me in school? What was I doing? I was taking thoughts. So I said, okay, you know what? Why don't we prove Jesus right? This thing that is making me take thought, I'm giving it away. I made up my mind. And I began to live like that. But boy, did I see the hand of God in my life. I'm still seeing that hand in my life day by day. So don't believe them when they tell you such things. I'm not saying don't get a job. No. It's good to have a job. It's good to be useful. It's good to put your mental ability to work and for the benefit of others. It's good. But listen to me. Whether you have a job or you don't have a job, it stops, doesn't stop God from meeting every need of yours. And I'm not saying going around, beg, go around begging people, you know, I don't have a job, you know, it's God that is taking care of Brothers, I say, if you say God is taking care of you, then begin to go around, give people the testimony of how God has been taking care of you. Not going around begging and say, you know, um, you know, I'm living by faith now. Or sometimes say, I, I do know right now, man, I, I live by the grace of God. I said, eh, how else were you supposed to live? Yeah, how else were you supposed to live? You know, sometimes we say these things without thinking. I say, ah, you know, the way we survive now is just by the grace of God. Though. I say, you're doing the right thing. That's how you're supposed to live. By the grace of God. Continue. No, 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 you know, that's not what I mean. I'm just trying to let you know that I see you are lying and living in unbelief. But let me tell you this truth. God has the ability to meet every need in your life. Praise God. He surely does. And he loves to do it. Jesus said it. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hear me? 
What you would need for the next 10 years is not in God's plan. He has finished it. He has finished it. Angels are there on ground, having received charge concerning you. But you know the problem? Your unbelief is the problem. Rise, fulfill God's dream. Rise, believe in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hey, I'm telling all this so that today, listen, I want you to receive a miracle today. How can we make demand now for our daily bread? Believe God. Believe Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. Everything I need. Now put your mind to something that you need today. Lord, I receive it from you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That's it. That's it. And what if, what, what if it does? Who told you to not come? What if it comes? But I know it will come. Praise God. It will come because God wants your joy to be full. Jesus said it acts so that you receive that your joy might be full. Praise God. Today is a special day. Let's <laughs> go turn your Bibles with me. So now we are in John chapter 3 and verse 16. Jesus speaking here. He said, for God so loved the world. Now here's the point on this scripture we're looking at. Whosoever believed on him, on who? Jesus should not perish. Instead of perishing, the person should have eternal life. Now, I'll share with you yesterday how much Jesus understood when God says, I have given you the ministry of eternal life. Jesus said in, in John chapter 10, he says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life. Take note of that. The reason I came is so that they will have life. Who? You. And have, not just have it, have it in abundance. What does he mean, have it in abundance? He was referring to eternal life. So it's another way of describing eternal life, the abundant life, everlasting life, the abundant life. So Jesus, maybe we should look at that also. I told you, I know I'm dealing with some people that don't like to open, their, open the scriptures and look at things. John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus speaking, he said, the thief cometh not but, to, for, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the ministry of the thief. So he steals from you, he kills and he destroys. And then, but Jesus said, I am come. Now he declares his ministry. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, that's another word to call eternal life, that they might have life and have eternal life. Yet, eternal life is what's referred to as more abundant life. Praise God. Now, that's what he said. I am come. So, has he come? Yes, he has come. Okay, if he has come, he came to give us eternal life. Yes. So, what are we doing with it? Now, let's go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I read this to you last week, but I want us to examine it again. John chapter 17. Now, Jesus. Now, I, why I love John chapter 17 is this. I, I call this the holiest chapter in the Bible. You know what I mean? I mean the holiest. Because here is a conversation between Jesus and his father. He wasn't talking to, he wasn't preaching his father to men. He wasn't um, telling men or rebuking men. He was talking to his father about himself. What a holy conversation. All right then, now let, let's start from verse 1, John chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, 
Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify thee. Mm. As, oh, I love this. Anytime I read this scripture, chills, I feel those chills in my body. Because men, some of you don't understand the import of this statement. It says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, all flesh, everybody. Now you remember what Jesus said before, that a time is coming when even those in the grave will hear his voice and they will all come out. Why? Because the Father has given him authority over all flesh. All. All. Both born again and not born again. All flesh. Brothers and sisters, you can't escape this. It's only through Jesus that you can have life. So he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Uh -huh. He should give. The reason God gave him power over all flesh, because God gave him something for all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Mm. Jesus, and, and there is no one else that have received this ministry. No one, no angel, no, no one. Lucifer didn't have it. It wasn't given to Lucifer. And, and Jesus speaking here says, verse 3, You know, I, I just wish the Holy Spirit will just open your understanding and pour this truth. Yes. You know, Paul was talking to um, the King Agrippa or Felix, one of them. And, and he said, I wish you would be like me, except for these bones. Because Paul looked at him and, and just wished, look, everything I'm explaining to you, I wish you would just know it. Because nobody sat me down to be explaining all these things to me. No. I've listened to good teachers. I will not lie to you. I've listened to good teachers. I've listened to great messages. But the conviction I carry in my heart is of the Holy Spirit. It's of the Lord. It's of the Lord. So, so you look at this and you say, God, why can't, why can't we just, why can't we? To just pour this thing in everyone. Let them walk with this mindset. We have eternal life. We have received. You know, watch this, watch this. Mm. Verse 3 says, And this is life eternal. What is it? That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou has sent. I told you last week, what Jesus said here is that they will know God through Jesus Christ. They will know him through Jesus Christ. Do people know God apart from Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But you see, that knowledge will not give you life. That knowledge can even destroy. You see that now? That's why sometimes people have this argument. For example, Elijah called down fire to destroy people. Another fire he called on Mount Carmel. That's fine. That's okay. See? But then there was a time they sent men to arrest him. He said, if I be a man, I will let fire come down and destroy. And he did. And fire destroyed about three um, three sets of armies or about two or three destroyed them 50 men destroyed the other 50 destroyed now you look at oh that's really a man of god he said, if i'm a man of god let fire come down and then jesus and his disciples were going somewhere and the people didn't want jesus to come and he said why don't we just call them like elijah did and jesus said no don't try that 
And he said, you don't know what manner of spirit that you are. Uh, but Elijah did it. Why is Jesus saying you should not do it? So there's this argument, it's not God that gave the fire. I know some people say, no, it's not God, it's the devil. I say, it's not the devil that sent the fire. Is it God that sent the fire? No, it's not God that sent the fire. So who sent the fire? Angels. Angels. Oh, I pray you understand the operation of angels. I pray you understand. It. You will begin to understand the errors of men and why those errors even bring forth manifestation, even though it is not God that did it. You will begin. I, I pray in this talk we go into all that. So as a man of God, you get to a level where you command so much authority. My time is up today. Praise God. I pray. My prayer for you sincerely is that the Lord will reveal himself to you through Jesus. Because that is the knowledge that brings life. Every other knowledge can bring death. Yes. But the only knowledge that brings life and will keep you in life is the knowledge that comes through Jesus. My time is up. Praise God. Let this become your portion. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.